Hello, ladies. My name is Jillian Jackson. I am a scholar at all of Harley College with the uh, Project Evolve program. I have the pleasure of working with IWC, helping with social media and reaching new engagement through those platforms. Um, on my own, I'm in charge of Token Essentials on Instagram. I'm aiming to help educate women and bring them into the space um, of cannabis and help people understand the plant itself and become comfortable with involving it in their everyday lives. Hello, hi Amanda. Um, I think it's a really exciting field to be a part of and I really look forward to reaching out to all of you. Um, I'm hoping to get my infuser license using my background in hospitality. 15 years of that and COVID knocked me down. So cannabis, food, education is who I am and what I wanna be. Um, I'm looking forward to our next panel, which will be about monetizing your skills in cannabis. Um, I can't wait, and I hope we all have a great time. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jillian, for the introduction to you. And uh, it was great to hear about you and see you. Uh, good morning still, everyone. Uh, my name is Gina Galt, and I will be stepping in to uh, moderate uh, from inside the greenhouse plant touching jobs. Um, we have about one minute. I'm just going to double check that we have everybody on and ready to go. Um, we are super excited to bring you uh, this panel. And um, now that we're at the top of the 10 o'clock hour, um, again, my name is Gina Galt. I am a board member with Illinois Women in Cannabis. I also work with Rise Dispensaries and am an active participant in the cannabis community. Um, I'm joined today by Katie Bell and Shan Moon, um, who will be uh, participating. They are the experts on this topic. Katie, would you care to introduce yourself? Sure. You guys are going to have to remind me to unmute myself because that's the theme of this year, right? Um, so I'm our Vice President of Talent Acquisition at Cresco Labs. I have over 10 years of experience across the board in talent acquisition and HR, and then specifically uh, going on my two-year anniversary here soon with Cresco Labs. So super excited. These are always, you know, some of my favorite topics. Obviously, I'm partial to it because it's my, my profession, but just in general, being able to speak to how people get their foot in the door, what to expect, all of that fun stuff really excites me. So very glad to be here. Well, thank you for joining us and congratulations are on your almost two year anniversary. Thank That's what you. 14 years in cannabis. I'm gonna say feels like a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Um, so so welcome and it's great to meet you virtually. Uh Shayun, if I'm not saying your name right, I sincerely apologize. Would you care to introduce yourself, please? Of course. Uh, my name is Seiya Moon. I'm the Senior Talent Acquisition Specialist for Verano Holdings. My main focus is recruiting for corporate and wholesale roles across the organization. And I'm happy to impart my, hopefully my experience and some of my uh, past exploits in this role. I've been uh, doing recruiting and talent acquisition for about six years with I would say about a year and a half in cannabis, so I'm really excited to be here. Wonderful, we're, we're so grateful to have you. Um, and forgive me as this is not my forte, so we'll be having this discussion like you're helping me get a plant touching job to ensure that we give our viewers um, the insights that they're looking for. Um, so everyone wants to get in to cannabis, but they may not have the skills more and more companies are offering entry-level roles. Uh, Sayun, what are some entry-level roles that are good ways to get into the industry on the cultivation side? On the cultivation side, we technically, technically emphasize on four parts. We've got cultivation, of course, extraction, uh, edible uh, creation, as well as packaging. Packaging is perhaps the best way to kind of ease your way into the cannabis, especially on the production side, typically because you get to see all of the finished products that a cultivation or manufacturing facility makes. And getting that kind of end result lets you have an idea of exactly where the quality is at. 
So it's a lot easier when you're looking into cultivation, extraction, jumping into the kitchen to make edibles. You can actually then try to break down how that process goes and it's a lot easier to ease in. Now with Verano, we do accept uh, entry-level roles in cultivation, kitchen and extraction, but uh, that can be a little overwhelming for a lot of new hires. Uh, but so we try to break it down a little bit further. So oftentimes new hires in cultivation, for example, will work in vegetation or harvest first just to get their kind of foot in the door and get used to the day-to-day -day aspect of cultivation before they really get, uh, I would say, completely into cultivation. And, you know, to, to piggyback off that a little bit, um, typically when you have open roles in uh, Verano, for instance, are you hiring mass groups of people? Are they one-offs? What are the opportunities in your space? What do they, they really look like for, for those who might not understand how many open roles there, there are and how many individuals they might be up against in applying for these roles? So typically when we are ready to open a particular facility for entry-level roles, we're looking from anywhere from five to about 25 at once for any of these positions. They're typically divided depending on business needs, of course, for our different departments. Um, but overall, uh, it, it's usually a mass bunch. So oftentimes there's a lot of opportunities available. And even if those opportunities aren't available at the moment, we can always hold on to their application for the next time we have openings. Because oftentimes with cultivation processing, you always get uh, either turnover or new openings or new business needs or growth phase that just uh, we went through that we need more people in. So uh, just even getting your foot in the door in the beginning can really help out and kind of propel yourself, even if it's not at that moment you get the position. Absolutely. And, and growth is a great way to be moved into a new position because that means somebody else got to kind of uh, move up from there. And, and uh, Katie, uh, on the Cresco side, what are maybe some opportunities that um, are available at entry level on the cultivation side within your organization? Yeah, very similar. Um, you know, I think the beauty of this industry right now is that we're all figuring out how it's supposed to work now. So definitely a lot of similarities between our organization um, and Verano's um, from what I'm hearing. So I, I echo, you know, what she said. I think that so many times when you think about an entry level opportunity, you're thinking hands on and actually getting to work with the materials and the best place to do that are in the facilities where we're doing the processing, the cultivation, the manufacturing, the production, and even through the distribution. So the one thing that I'll add to that is there are also roles across things like logistics agents, you know, drivers who actually have to get product to and from. Um, we rely so much on our own distribution in this industry that there are a lot of positions like that, materials handlers, you know, things that are actually helping the supply chain aspect. Um, but to her point, you know, if you are somebody who has attention to detail, uh, processing is a really good way for you to get your foot in the door, actually looking at the flower and trimming it how you need to trim it, um, making sure that the sizes are matching uh, through then packaging even goes into, you know, attention to detail there as well. So um, there are a lot of ways then from entry level that you can advance because in those positions you have leads, supervisors, and then eventually managers across each of those individual departments. Wonderful. And for those who may not know, where, uh, when we look at opportunities on the cultivation side, where are we looking? Are we looking in Northern Illinois? Are we looking in the Southern tip of uh, Illinois? Like for those who have no idea, where, where are they looking? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and quite honestly, we take up so much space for one of our facilities. I mean, our largest is about 250,000 square feet. So you can imagine that, that the geography itself usually leans a little bit more rural just because we have to have the space uh, to be able to, to build and expand the facility. Um, so us specifically, most of ours are going to find um, a couple hours outside of the city of Chicago. So Joliet, Kankakee, and Lincoln are specifically our locations. Um, and even if you're not talking about Illinois in general, they're usually that hour, two hours, even more outside of your major cities. So definitely geography can play a part in that. 
I think that's just something that's really important to kind of talk about at the top of the hour. Most people think, oh, I'm going to get a plant touching job. And, you know, I live in Gurney or in Chicago proper. And then they find out that, uh, you know, the, we're talking about two football fields worth of space that that needs to to exist in a place. So thank you. Um, and, and Katie, while we're on the topic with you, we know that uh, Cresco is really beefing up corporate level entry roles. What does the, what do those look like for Cresco? Yeah, you know, so often I think people, um, you know, think of corporate as being, you know, the most impactful positions in the company. Um, but really, you know, if you want to work specifically with cannabis, those facility and those retail roles are the best way for you to actually get exposed to the products. Uh, corporate, however, is also a really great opportunity. Uh, you just have less interaction with cannabis specific at that point, because as our corporate office, we are structuring ourselves like any other CPG company out there would be structured. So most of those opportunities are going to be related to certain crafts or subjects that you have an expertise in. So either your education or your prior experience will lean you to certain departments like finance or accounting, marketing, real estate, you know, you name it. If there's a function of that at, at most companies, we probably have a version of that here in, in Cresco. And they're usually not cannabis specific. So uh, entry-level roles would be things like your marketing analysts or your HR coordinators, your quality specialists, things like that, where you can take a subject matter that you might have a couple years of experience in or education in and apply it into a corporate role. And yes, we talk about cannabis all day. We apply our knowledge towards cannabis, but it's less about the industry and more about building a company at that point that is going to be sustainable. Absolutely. Um and uh, Se Yoon, um, how would you define entry level? We're, we're talking a lot about entry level roles, whether it's in corporate or in um, the cultivation centers, but what does it mean when we say entry level? So technically speaking, entry level is anyone that has no experience and it's their first time jumping into an industry. But as we know, oftentimes when we look at job descriptions, a lot of companies define entry level as having some type of experience, which does go against the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what we attempt to do here at Verano, and I'm sure Katie can attest the same, is with entry level, it is going to be divided, of course, depending on the particular position. A lot of the cannabis positions, especially when it comes to processing, cultivation, retail and so forth, a lot of those require not so much experience to start at entry level. Uh, with entry level, we uh, typically have a program in place to be able to train and develop brand new employees coming into the cannabis space. We're essentially just looking for someone who has the, I would say the soft skills, as well as the ability to stick with tenure at their position. That's really the focus for us. So for us, entry level is really going to be more the main focus on the um, the actual plant touching jobs. In terms of corporate, however, it is going to depend on obviously the, the departments and the subject matter expertise needed. As Katie mentioned, um, with particular uh, positions, there's going to be at least a prerequisite for uh, some kind of education, or a slight a bit of experience within that realm, just so you know exactly some of the nuances of that particular subject. So that's something to keep in mind for those that are looking into corporate entry-level roles is that oftentimes there is a pre prerequisite involved. Sometimes that prerequisite might be an experience. Sometimes it can be just an educational background within that subject that can definitely set you up for success as opposed to put you in a position that could jeopardize your performance within the job. Wonderful. And, and Katie, I'll, I'll kick the same question to you. When, when Cresco defines entry level, um, is it very similar to how Seyun has, has shared or, or are there some discrepancies when, when looking at from company to company? Yeah, um, I, I would say we're in the same boat. You know, when you think about corporate uh, and the specific departments within corporate, it's so helpful when you're in an industry like this that is just moving so fast 
that we can't even keep up. So the thought of having to ramp somebody up in a marketing role that doesn't have marketing experience or in an HR role without prior HR experience, it's pretty intimidating. You know, we, we look for people who can hit the ground running. And so it is tough to have, you know, what would be considered an entry level job at, you know, some other companies that might have a little bit more, um, you know, developmental opportunity to get somebody there either fresh out of college or, you know, with a couple years of experience that maybe doesn't immediately translate into that position. Um, and, and it's something that we're working on, of course, addressing, you know, creating a little bit more of those entry level corporate roles. But quite honestly, where, where the beauty happens and the magic happens are in those facilities and those dispensaries where we give, you know, that foot in the door. The only experience you need to have in those areas are things like, you know, soft skills, like Sayun had mentioned before, you know, attention to detail and willingness and flexibility to do whatever it takes to get the job done. Um, those are the things that are going to get you the foot in the door, and then you're really going to shine. So, you know, one of the examples I can speak to is, you know, once you have some of that industry experience, and especially within a company, sometimes that that knowledge or just in general, your tenure with the company that might give you a little bit of an edge uh, over, you know, somebody externally that might come with maybe that marketing experience or that HR experience. Um, but we're willing to lean in on internals just simply because at this point, you know, cannabis and you know, Cresco, and, and it's really difficult in this industry. So we recently welcomed um, a new recruiter, a recruiting coordinator to our HR team. And that person ended up coming from retail. They were a top performer in retail. They were what we call wellness advisors, but you probably know them in the industry as patient care specialists or bud tenders and no prior HR experience or recruiting experience, but their customer service, their communication skills, their knowledge of the positions and, and the requirements, you know, you can't teach that. Um, so they're going to be a great addition to our team. And we were able to, to tap them on the shoulder because of how well they were doing in the, the dispensary. That's great. It's, it's always great when um, someone who shows that they can walk the walk and talk the talk and can recognize that customers transcend roles. And it's really about who you're dealing with and how you can supply them the support that they need. Um, while, while we're on you, Katie, what are some ways individuals with more traditional backgrounds, retail, uh, operations, corporate can transition into cannabis via an entry level facility role? Uh, you know, what, what are the roles can, what are the roles that those individuals aren't considering? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, I, I've been saying, I feel like the last six months, I've been calling it, you know, this is the year of fine tuning um, as a company, you know, where we get away from, you know, the wild, wild west that it used to be. And we're really looking at putting in systems or processes or things just to make us more efficient, more, you know, um, sophisticated, I guess, you know, to, to really help our company take it to that next level. And so whenever you have roles like that, there are probably a lot of roles that people aren't even considering that exist in cannabis right now. So, you know, ERP roles, right? If we're implementing SAP now, if you're a systems or a technical person, um, if you're an operations person who's really good at managing projects, there are a lot of positions like that happening across the board at corporate, within our facilities, because again, we're, we're taking things to the next level. So if, if you have a skill set like that, that's going to help us operate more efficiently, then we're, we want to talk to you. You know, we, we want to be the Coca-Cola of cannabis out there, right? And, and we want to just see our business um, really expand. And I think a lot of cannabis companies are similarly reaching that point where, you know, everything's less manual and you're really starting to do some of the fine tuning. I think those could be really fun positions. Great. And so Yun, I'd, I'd ask you the same question. What are, what are some ways that individuals with more traditional backgrounds can come into the cannabis industry and transition via entry level roles? You know, what aren't they considering? A lot of it is going to echo what Katie said. Um, there's a lot of positions and areas of expertise that a lot of people don't realize. One of the biggest needs that we currently have is actually in construction as we're getting more and more facilities built out, more locations built out. Uh, these construction experts 
have been able to help us manage those projects efficiently. And it's really about what uh, Katie mentioned is really streamlining that process, making it so much better for us to grow as a business. And oftentimes these roles, construction, uh, logistics, distribution, uh, any of the non-production roles can really help out a facility even to the entry level, there are some people out there that don't realize who have security experience that they can jump on board as a security guard at either of our retail or cultivation facilities. And it's not until they actually see a job description and talk to me, they're like, oh, I've been doing security for years. I've been wanting to get into cannabis for years. And this is finally that match made in heaven for me. So it's always exciting to be able to, um, to realize that. So oftentimes what I recommend for a candidate who feels that their expertise isn't going to be transitioning well is to ask us, reach out to us, look over the job descriptions for the different cannabis companies, see if there's any expertise that you have that you can bring on board. We'd love to talk to you, especially as these needs become more and more for us as we grow. Um, I, I love that. And the fact that you're, you are each echoing means that there, there's some real validity to, to what you're sharing because you're kind of piggybacking off of one another. Um, uh, while, while we're, we're still with you, um, you know, when we are talking about cannabis and, and Katie had mentioned, you know, not only are we fine tuning and there are so many roles that maybe don't look exactly like cannabis, how does passion for cannabis fit into some of the values for your companies and how, you know, maybe a security guard that is very passionate about cannabis and has been, you know, managing and security, how do those, you know, relationships marry and, and how is cannabis important in your company? So with a passion for cannabis, I believe it really does help a candidate and an employee see the big picture in the business process, especially if they come from a medical cannabis background. They understand that ultimately these products are going to end users who need them for various ailments. And in order to help facilitate and better that process, their job matters. So they essentially get to see almost a direct result of what their efforts are done, even if it's not directly related to products. So I believe that's actually a very important factor when it comes to coming into the cannabis industry. Of course, you can definitely come in and succeed without a passion for cannabis. I've had people who really more wanted the role itself as opposed to the industry it's in, but it can add a lot of context and again, that big picture viewpoint of what this is ultimately bringing is health and wellness to our communities, um, to better ourselves and to better those around us. So that has been, I think, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just gonna say that that's wonderful. I, I don't, I, I think that, you know, understanding that the, the whole plant, the whole process does serve an end person and making sure that whether you're a security guard or a delivery driver, you're, what you do really matters for the end um, consumer and the end patient. I, I think that's a, a, a really great point that I'm not sure that everybody spends time considering when they're applying for these positions. Um, Definitely. Katie, I, I'll ask you the same thing. And for Cresco, how does, you know, passion for cannabis fit into and how valuable is it for your company? Yeah, um, you know, my initial role reaction is I think some roles more than others benefit from that passion. Um, but I have to say, I have to echo her again, right? Across the board, you know, there's something so magical about being in this industry because you get to marry something with your passion uh, in, in your day-to-day -day job. And quite honestly, you know, for those of you who are listening and wanting to get into cannabis, what you probably don't realize is it's really hard. Um, you know, cannabis is tough because you have to remember that we're doing this for the very first time. So we are, in a lot of cases, they might be roles, you know, that we're creating. So you're creating new roles in a new company, in a new industry. And, oh, by the way, we're still federally illegal, right? So you have all of these unique challenges and obstacles in cannabis that when you have a passion for what you do and you can understand, you know, that we're not just building a business right now, we are trying to change the narrative of an entire company and how they see our industry. And 
those long days or those confusing days, you know, they're so much easier uh, when you are aligned to what our mission is. And if you're passionate about what we do, um, that's going to be the perseverance you need to be successful in cannabis. So I, I have to agree that no matter what role, it'll take you far. Um, but if your passion is really kind of around the plant and, you know, you want to learn about it, you want to talk about it, you want to touch it, you want to feel it, you know, it goes back to what we were saying before, you know, that magic is happening in the dispensaries and in the facilities. And so if, if that's really where your passion is, is just getting to know the product and the plant um, and how it helps people go to the dispensary and be a wellness advisor and, and help somebody treat their ailment or go to the cultivation center and figure out how we clone and how we grow and how the different strains actually end up affecting our products. Um, those are really, really cool ways to marry that, um, that passion. But again, you know, if, if you are down for cannabis and you believe in it, then that's going to take you a lot farther uh, in this industry because you, you really need that motivation to kind of keep going and, you know, pave the way in these uncharted waters for other people to follow in our footsteps. And, you know, while, while you're talking about going to the cultivation center and things like that, what are some things that you think candidates that maybe work in traditional CPG, what do you think is kind of surprising for them to learn when they onboard and when they come into these industries? Um, I, I do help participate in some of the badging, and that's always so eye-opening for a lot of these candidates. They're like, I've never had to go through any process like this before. Why am I doing this? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I always joke big brother is watching um, <laughs> because, you know, everything we do is is really under the microscope and, and you know, as it should be. Um, so I think that is a, a real shock for people just in general, right? The regulations um, that we deal with on a regular basis. Um, but also I think how um, unstructured still sometimes we are you know, I warn people that, you know, where we're at as a company, right, I said fine tuning in some areas, right, but other areas, we're still doing the foundational building. And I think people come in and, and they'll have moments where they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you guys are already doing this. And then five minutes later, they're going to say, oh my gosh, I can't believe you guys don't even have this yet. Um you know, and you get that so much. So I honestly think that the the culture shock is just realizing that we're still doing a lot of building. And some of the more obvious questions that you might be asking yourself, why do you do it this way? Or why can't you do it this way? We probably don't have the answers to those yet. So um, it's really cool to see people come in and just realize how much opportunity there is to have a say in how things are done around here. I think that's also one of the advantages is you know, you, you get to see how the sausage is made and, and participate in it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we need to come up with a better term than sausage is made because uh, <laughs> you I get to see how the plant is grown. There we go. There we go. You get to see how the lights are kept on, perhaps. Uh, yeah. Sayun, how about for you? What What is something that you kind of, um, you know, maybe uh, first week, first month onboarding uh, candidates, whether they're in cultivate and, and maybe from a cultivation side, what what's something that they get in and they're blown away by, or they're surprised by, or, you know, uh, you know, maybe elated by. So I always call just kind of the workplace and the responsibilities and the environment manageable chaos, because mm. there's elements all over the place. Things are currently being managed and handled in some way, but we're still a new industry. Even the state is trying to kind of go through trial by uh, fire just to find out what is the best process for everybody involved. And oftentimes coming up with that, we're gonna run into some errors, not necessarily errors when it comes to uh, going against state compliance and regulations. No, we definitely wanna stick with that 100%. But oftentimes finding out this production line that we thought was working out isn't really working out so well. So let's change it up next week because we need to be able to fit this schedule. And oftentimes new hires coming in, we see that chaos and think that we have absolutely no idea what we're doing, which some part is kind of true. Yeah. In most parts, however, uh, we have been at least been able to utilize our experience and our expertise to know, I know we initially thought that this was going in that direction, but multiple different factors are coming in telling us this is probably not the best way now. So let's transition it upward and trying to explain that to candidates 
uh, has been actually something that has been eye opening to them. And it becomes even more so when they're actually going through the onboarding process, when they find out that their badge has not yet come in yet because the state hasn't approved it or uh, they're going through the process of doing their I-9s and it's like, okay, what's next? Okay, we're going to get you in with the supervisor right now to do on the job training. And whoa, I didn't know that I had to do that. I mm -hmm. thought there would be like videos about the full different trainings before I even jump in where they're more used to an established industry. So that has probably been the, the biggest factor that I've noticed when it comes to onboarding new employees and, and candidates interested in jumping into the industry when they're trying to manage the uh, chaotic elements of our industry. Yeah, I like to say that you never walk into the same space week after week. There is evolution on the state side, which then turns into evolution on the industry side. And so it's just this constant, you have to be able to build structure yourself. And you also have to be very uh, moldable and be able to adapt and roll with the punches. Um, I think that's something that maybe not everybody understands when they come into the industry that it's still evolving and growing. And, and while we're talking about growth, you know, because there are, you might get in, in an entry level role, what, what can growth look like, you know, uh, and so you will stay with you, you might come in in a cultivation role and the state adds in something or you recognize that that um, production line wasn't working and you're going to pivot and adjust. So growth probably looks very different. Um, is there maybe a, a role that you have in the back of your mind that you saw evolve in a way that was unexpected? And what can somebody look towards when they think about growth in cannabis for themselves? I think the biggest adjustment that I've seen is probably with the cultivation role. Cultivation itself is a huge department. Oftentimes there's multiple different tasks that a particular cultivation specialist has to complete in order to make sure that the plants are well maintained and cared for throughout the different life cycles. But what you do in vegetation is and cloning and propagation is going to be much different than what you do in the flower room or much what, different than what you do in the harvest room. So in order for us to kind of uh, evolve with that, oftentimes we do have to spend spell out, this is essentially the different types of responsibilities that you might have within the cultivation specialist position. Each day may not be the same. Each day may be the exact same mm -hmm. as we decide we um, which per person is best fit with which role. Uh, obviously, some people might not be too happy about constantly trimming every single day, but sometimes there might be something that comes up that is uh, required by business needs to pull that person and to pop them into vegetation for one day, uh, just so that we can get that cloning process uh, ready for our next batch of products. Uh, one of the things that we like to do at our facilities is we like to to emphasize on collaborative environments, especially for all across the department, especially when a facility is just starting out. There's going to be situations where there's gaps in the work production and we need to bring more people on board. And oftentimes we love to cross train in other departments despite their original one, just so that they can get that experience and learn more about other sides of the business and learn new skill sets. But then they also get to be exposed to that side of the business as perhaps an interest that they've never even considered. Maybe they came in wanting to be part of that cultivation portion for growing the plant, but then when they work one day in the kitchen, just kind of helping out as dishwasher, they're seeing the edibles being made and they're saying, I absolutely love this. I really want to be a part of this. What can I do to get started? And then we can then start talking about development and training from that board. Um, so that has been my experience. Uh, it sounds like uh, you end up with some really well-rounded employees. And it also, uh, I'm hearing, it sounds like communication is really important with the leadership in the rooms. If you're finding interest in, you know, um, in infusion that you should ensure that the your colleagues are aware of your interest because really you're your own advocate especially in moving up in a company definitely we, we rely on our frontline supervisors and managers to be able to communicate to us whenever they see a stellar candidate or a candidate who might not be doing so well in a particular department but has shown a lot of promise in another 
section of the facility because we're more apt to try to work with the employee to help develop their skill sets because it is a new industry and often a lot of the tasks that are being done it's something that someone else has not done before and it's difficult to gauge oftentimes what your passion is until you actually start doing it and oftentimes these cross trainings help uh, kind of gather that interest and, and help the managers be able to learn a little bit more about their employees. Wonderful. Um, thank you. That was extremely informative for, for myself as well. Uh, Katie, I'll, I'll ask you the same question when we're looking at growth, uh, not just with the plants, you know, what are some ways uh, to grow beyond those entry level roles in, uh, in like a Cresco? Yeah, um, you know, I, I know you said not the plant, but just to reiterate something, you know, if you're thinking about where we're at as a maturity standpoint in this industry, um, there are not a lot of people who are coming with prior experience for some of those more technical positions. So when you look at cultivation and extraction and things like that, you know, the, the well isn't as full as some of the more, the other entry level positions. Um, and that's really where you can become that subject matter expert. You know, if you can learn uh, how to, you know, be a cultivation manager and then eventually a director of cultivation or an extraction or, or manufacturing manager um, and move up those ranks, that is really where there's a big need for that in the industry right now. And so if you can find your, your way to a path in that internally by starting out at one of the facilities and, and getting exposure to those processes, you're going to be very valuable in this industry. You know, you're going to be able to, to use that um, in both to advance your career at that company, or you know, maybe that means moving to another company that's maybe a little bit further along, or maybe that's a lot newer and needs somebody with your expertise to help get them ramped up. Um, so those are the areas where I think there's a lot of magic in that because you don't have a ton of competition. You know, we've, we've created most of our director of cultivations internally at this point, uh, because there aren't a lot of them out there that already have cannabis experience at this level. Um, so you're going to be putting yourself, you know, in a position to be very, very valuable to a company, you know, if you head down those, those paths. Um, the other side is on the retail side. I, I saw somebody, you know, had a question, you know, where does a hairstylist fit in this industry? Um, perfectly as a wellness advisor, you know, wellness advisors for us or patient care specialists or, or bud tenders, those are the people who are on the front lines, right? You are helping people find product that will, will help them and you're educating them. And you're also using that as a platform to remind people why cannabis isn't such a bad thing and removing some of that stigma just simply through conversation. And so if you have good communication skills and you can be successful with wellness advisor roles, Every position has those elevated levels, like I said earlier, right? Lead positions, supervisor positions, manager positions, and even into regional director positions and above. And more often than not, you know, we want to look internally to fill those roles wherever we can. Um, the one thing that I will say is, you know, the, the catch to that is we move so fast as an industry that sometimes we forget that, you know, maybe we're moving too fast for our own good. And that can be the case for, you know, internal candidates as well. Um, you have to remember that, you know, when you're in a position, you have to give yourself time to perfect that role. Um, you know, this, this immediate gratification of, you know, every six weeks, I'm going to go into packaging and then I'm going to go into cultivation and then I'm going to go into logistics. Um, it's great to have that cross-functional training. But you have to remember that because we're doing some of this fine tuning, those positions are also evolving as you're in them. And so you need to give yourself time to, to master your craft there. And once you've done that and you're that standout candidate, that's when you can talk about, you know, next steps, right? What, where can I go from here? Um, but that patience is really, really tough because you see everything moving so fast that, you know, you can't help but want to be a part of it. Um, but you, you have to remember it has to be sustainable. Um, so, you know, give yourself six months in the role and, and then think where it can go from there. And if you're steadily moving up every six months, I mean, you're going to be a, a manager or a director here in just a few years. Oh, I, I really do love that. And while we're kind of talking about um, the evolution of a role and your positions and role, Kitty, we'll stick with you and then uh, pass it over to Seiyun to, for um the same question, and, and then we'll go ahead and take some questions from um, the Q&A, but uh, where does continuing education and some of these cannabis courses come into play 
you know, and on the other side is that if you don't have those and, and maybe you, you know, you've been growing, you know, growing, how, how does some of that, you know, do we put that on our resume? Do we not put that on our resume? What is alluring to recruiters that do see continuing education classes? You know, how can we ensure that, um, those individuals who might have those skill sets in maybe under the covers, how do they, how do they bring those to the recruiters? Yeah, um, I would say definitely put things on your resume that are applicable as long as they're not illegal. Um, I feel like I have to give that that PSA because so many people, you know, they get so excited when they have an interview, they want to talk about all their experience. And I get it. I'm not, you know, naive. I understand that this definitely happened before, you know, legalized cannabis happened. Um, that stuff probably to avoid, okay, to talk about your general knowledge, but being explicit about that is not the best idea. Um, but definitely put your, your higher education on there um, and definitely put, you know, your experience. Uh, the one thing that I will say is, you know, going back to our question earlier on how far does your passion carry you in this industry? Um, along with that, your knowledge of the product or of this industry in general is going to take you further when you're actually in the facility or the dispensary where you're working exclusively with the product. Um, simply because everything we do in those settings is centered around our products, our brands, the flower, um, the plant itself, you know, all of that is super cannabis focused. So your knowledge of, you know, sativa versus indica or, you know, propagation techniques and things like that are going to take you really far when you're actually getting to work with the product. Um, where I would say it would have less impact truly is on the corporate side, because again, kind of going back to what I said before, you know, we're hiring for subject matter experts in areas for most companies. You know, we want a senior analyst for cost accounting. And whether you've grown cannabis before or not, you're going to be a really good senior analyst of cost accounting if you're good at that job. Um, so that's where it loses a little bit just at the corporate level um, where it doesn't have to be cannabis specific. But even then, if you can show that not only do you have cost accounting experience, but you also took a class on cannabis and understand our subject matter, that's definitely going to set you apart from the person next to you. Wonderful. And, and just to kind of share, um, not sharing illegally, just as a reminder, medical patients can grow up to five plants. And if you, you know, started your career in California and came out this way, those are still ways to put your applicable knowledge onto a resume. If you're looking at something on the cultivation side. Absolutely. So, don't Caregivers, yes. Michigan, Massachusetts, we there definitely want to see that for sure. Wonderful. Uh, and and say, yeah, same question. How does corporate, or pardon me, how does uh, continuing education, cannabis education, and maybe, you know, some uh, assets from a life before, how do they come into play um, in either helping yourself stand out or, or maybe being aware of not to address on your resume? A lot of these are probably going to be repeats, um, but definitely put them on your resume if they are applicable to the role. We definitely want to see any type of experience. Of course, keeping in mind of the context surrounding uh, the industry itself. So obviously if you have experience in California or Oregon or Colorado, that's been beyond the time obviously of when uh, Illinois had medical cannabis, of course, that's going to be definitely applicable to us. Uh, and I'd be more than happy to talk to uh, candidates about that. And of course, candidates often do get overexcited uh, in regards to their own experience. And of course, you could share that with me, but of course, just be mindful of the legality surrounding that uh, before we, of course, uh, continue. In terms of the continuing education classes, uh, I do think they're, those are really great, especially if they're cannabis focused, to give an overview of the business, overview of the products, the strains, how uh, medically can help a particular patient or an user. Uh, in terms of in, uh, as a requirement for us, it's definitely not a requirement, but it will make you stand out compared to other candidates. So that has been something that we typically look at for when it comes to resumes or talking to candidates, having that prior experience or prior knowledge can help add context to how you might approach a particular task or role within the position that you apply for. Wonderful. And I, I'm going to just pull some questions here from um, the chat. Um, with all with you receiving so many resumes, how can applicants 
help make sure their resumes are noticed by recruiters? Are there suggestions? Are you guys using automated systems? What are ways to ensure that the resumes end up in the hands of the recruiters? So take it away, for, anybody. Okay. <laughs> so for uh, for my end, uh, we typically review uh, applicants as they come in, order from, of course, oldest to newest, uh, depending on, of course, any other uh, systems that we use. We do typically pull in applications and resumes from various job boards. They do go into one pool. One of the things I think a lot of applicants may want to just double check, uh, especially in the first couple of weeks, look out for any emails, especially in your spam folder. Sometimes we want to talk to you, but we're not getting a response for some reason. And unfortunately, a lot of email providers do look into uh, or don't really consider it's coming from an ATS system and they will end up putting that email into spam. So one of the things I've been telling candidates to do, hey, if you're expecting to get a response from a job, maybe you are getting that response, but it might be in a place where you're not expecting. So not only check your inbox, also check your spam folder, because more likely than not, if you've got the tenure, the soft skills, and you're showing yourself to be a very presentable uh, candidate in your resume, uh, I more than likely have reached out to you at just in spam. So. Wonderful. And Katie, uh, the next question I'll throw to you is for more senior leadership roles, uh, when we have experience in different specialty areas, does it hurt me as a candidate to apply for multiple roles within a department? Do you view these candidates as unfocused? Great question. Um, and it, I think it actually, you know, goes into the last question that we just asked too, how you stand out. Um, I would say, you know, it's okay to apply to multiple jobs as long as it really does match your experience. Um, I think where it would be a detriment is, you know, if, if you are applying to every job that we have opened and that can come across as, you know, being unfocused or just not really understanding what you want to do. Um, but honestly, you know, my, my answer was going to be uh, for, you know, how you stand out is to keep at it. You know, we are inundated a lot of times with people who want to work in this industry. And don't get me wrong, it is like a recruiter's dream, you know, to have <laughs> hundreds of applicants in every single position. Um, but it is sometimes hard to get through to everybody. And so if you don't get called the first time around, it might not be because you weren't a fit simply because we maybe didn't get to you or they weren't enough openings. So continuing to try is a really good thing, um, but continuing to try by applying for every single job we have, you know, we see what you've applied to. Um, most people, unless you're in an HR role, probably don't know that, but when we see your application, we can tell what other positions that you've applied to. And it can sometimes be a deterrent if you're applying to be, you know, a VP of HR and then a cultivation agent and then, you know, an accounting manager. And we're just not really sure where you're going with this. Um, but I would say, you know, the job descriptions are there for a reason. And so if you can use that to say, yes, I'm qualified, but also use that to maybe tweak your resume so that it appears more obvious that you have that retail experience when you're applying to the retail job or you have that HR experience applying to that HR job, it is gonna stand out. Um, and I would be more selective and kind of going back to what I said earlier to patients. You know, we are creating new roles for the very first time as an organization. So if you see something and you wanna do the job, but you're just not particularly qualified for, for doing the job, wait, you know, there's probably going to be that perfect opening for you in a couple days, a couple weeks, maybe a couple months at this point. And I think that it would benefit you to be maybe a little more targeted in your search, but even then keep applying. If you see that same job over and over and over again, keep applying to that same job because we'll eventually get to you. Wonderful. Um, uh, so Yoon, I'll ask you, uh, are there, these, this is a two-part question. I'm taking two questions and adding them together. Um, are there various dispensary training certificates being offered around Illinois required for those entry-level roles? Um, and where can someone get uh, more cannabis education that's taken seriously by some of um, the companies like Cresco and Verano? So in regards to the first question, certification is not required for our dispensary roles, 
for us, we really more look at retail experience, potentially hospitality experience as our main focus, or just general customer service experience is also very helpful. Uh, certification can definitely, because at least that does go through the cannabinoids as well as the terpenes that might be required, uh, that uh, will be an easy transition for you. But we go through that training anyway with every single what we call cannabis consultants or bud tenders or patient care advisors. Um, in their first couple of weeks. So you would get that training regardless. So it's a matter of if you want some of that context in advance jumping on board, but for us, it's not required at all. And I'm, and I'm so sorry, would you be able to repeat that second question for me? Sure, so the second question was, um, where can I get more cannabis education that cannabis companies are taking seriously? Are there, are there educational um, bits that you look at and you're like, oh, this absolutely aligns and we know that these individuals are well vetted. Are there some in your experience that when they come up on resumes, you're just regularly like, oh, perfect. This, we've had experience with this educational source before and it's, it's a reliable one. So for us, we uh, are cultivating processing facilities way down south in Albion, Illinois. So we typically pull from the local community colleges. They do have agricultural or um, horticultural certifications, as well as internships that we oftentimes look for. Specific cannabis classes, uh, I know for a lot of our uh, retail dispensaries, we know of Oakland Community College has been okay with us. Uh, but any sort of dispensary, I would say cannabis uh, education class can definitely be a plus, but it's it's also not going to be a, a full requirement or, or something that will definitely not necessarily put you miles above any other candidates, but definitely put a star. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and uh, Katie, we'll kick this one over to you. Trying to understand work-life balance. Do we work 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours, 70 hours? What does a typical uh, work week look like for some of these roles? Yeah, so uh, typical work week is, you know, your 40 hours, either in a dispensary or the facility. Um, there is opportunity for overtime. A majority of those roles are non-exempt roles, which means, you know, you punch a time card and if you go over 40 hours, you get overtime pay as well. Um, which can be really nice, you know, it gives you an opportunity to make a little bit more money. Um, and also, you know, our, our ebbs and flows of business sometimes says, you know, we need to, you know, ramp up production and we'll, we'll offer overtime opportunities for folks. But for the most part, you know, we really want to keep it at that 40 hour mark so that you guys can balance, you know, work and life. Um, I would say the exception to that is at the corporate level, because, you know, we don't know what's happening in five minutes, let alone five weeks or five months from now. So there are definitely, you know, some longer days than others. I think that goes back to what I said before, where your passion is going to help you persevere. Um, and quite honestly, the long days are fun days anyways. So uh, I have an appreciation for the work that I get to do, even though it is work. And, and I feel like I spent a lot of time working for Cresco, talking about Cresco, cannabis, this, cannabis, that. Um, it's really great. You know, if, if you have that appetite for doing it, then the hours don't seem as long as they do, but there's definitely times where, you know, there's no such thing as that's not my job around here um, mm -hmm. is I guess what I'm trying to say. So you do sometimes have to go above and beyond um, and do some extra things here and there. I've worked in our dispensary before, you know, just simply because we need some extra help and I'm badged. So I'll do whatever it takes. Um, and I think that, you know, you would have to manage that individually. Absolutely. Uh, so Ian, same question. And then I think we'll wrap it up with where uh, individuals can get a hold of you and um, maybe where these jobs are centrally located might be helpful to learn as well. Of course. So uh, for my contact information, you can reach out to me at seyun.moon at verano.holdings. Uh, there's no .com at the end. The holdings is actually the domain. Uh, and a lot of our dispensary roles are dispersed throughout Illinois, both uh, near Chicagoland area and Chicago proper, as well as in central and southern Illinois. Our cultivation and processing facility in Illinois is down in Albion, so it is near the southern Indiana Kentucky border. Uh, if you are willing to relocate, though, I definitely reach out to me because we <laughs> definitely need a lot of people down there. And if you're interested in joining the cultivation manufacturing side of cannabis, I'd love to talk to you. 
Wonderful. And, and Katie, how, how can individuals get a hold of you should they choose to? Yeah, so my email is katie.bell, K-A-T-I-E dot bell at crescolabs.com. Um, and I will say too, I we have a really big uh, team of recruiters right now. We're doing a ton of hiring and growing. So getting a hold of any one of them through LinkedIn is going to be, you know, a good opportunity. Full disclosure, we might not respond all the time. <laughs> I'm inundated with messages. I try my best. I really, really do, but I promise I'm not ignoring you. Just send me another message and I'll probably get it to the second time around. Um, but email is a great contact. And just really quickly, something that I, I get questioned a lot about is, you know, because we post so many jobs, there are a lot of third-party job boards out there that will aggregate our jobs um, or they'll scrape them from our postings and they don't always then close the jobs when they get closed out or, or update them accordingly. So if you saw a job floating around out there and now suddenly you can't find it, or you see a job that keeps popping up, um, I would say double check our careers page. Um, sorry about my cat. Um, double check our careers page because that's going to be the most updated list of all of our openings. So if you saw a job that you don't see on the career page anymore, it's probably gone. Or if you keep getting, you know, notifications about something, not really sure where to find it, just go simply to crescolabs.com and there's a careers tab there and that would be the best place to apply. Uh, that is a great point um, because I think that that does happen from time to time that they just see it and they're like, I, I, it pops up and I can't find it. I think um, yeah. to that point, going to the cultivator that you're interested in, their careers page is likely going to be the best way to end up in the hands of the recruiters themselves rather than like the, the LinkedIn's and things of that nature. I think that's a, a, a real pro tip there. Um, and, and just to kind of um, not only say thank you so much to you wonderful uh, women, thank you for sharing your knowledge with everyone here. Thank you for participating in IWC's second annual conference. It's been great to have you. Um, I, I feel like this is brought up on almost every conversation that I have the privilege of sitting in on. Don't forget about a cover letter. Don't forget about a resume. These are all things that do exist and make an impact in the cannabis industry just as they do in any of the other uh, roles that you might be applying for. Um, it's very important to speak to your audience. If you're the employee, you know, or the prospective candidate, making sure that you are showing up professionally from the moment you um, create your application, I think is, is really essential. Um, ladies, any uh, last imparting gifts you'd like to share with our attendees? I just want to thank you guys for your interest, for having me here. I'm so excited always to talk about stuff like this. So it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. And to echo uh, Katie, thank you so much for the opportunity to jump on this panel and to be able to hopefully impart some of my experience as well as just the overall uh, gratitude that I feel towards the industry. There's a lot of great things in the industry and hopefully we were able to provide that information for everyone here to be able to take home and digest and hopefully utilize in the future. Well, well, thank you both so much for the conversation, for your time. Um, everyone, we're going to take a small five minute break so you can stretch your legs and grab yourself a fresh glass of water. And we'll be back at 11 a.m. with uh, Seed to Success, Community College's Roles in Cannabis Workforce Development. Uh, shout out to Sei Yun, who shared that, in fact, community college make an impact in these role opportunities. Uh, so we'll see you back here in about four or five minutes. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>